Hello, my name is Preston. Today we're in Raleigh, North Carolina, installing a grassland in this front yard. The front yard is almost half the property, and since the homeowner isn't likely to spend much time relaxing in this semi-public space, it's largely a gift to the neighborhood. This is Miguel, he's running the project, and we're going to see how a grassland is installed. Front yards in this neighborhood are typically lawns, but our client doesn't have the time or interest to mow 20 times or more per year. Instead, the design focuses on a constructed grassland that will be much more dynamic than a lawn and more beneficial to birds and pollinating insects, which is a goal of the homeowner. Grasslands are dynamic, and that's what makes them so exciting. They never look the same twice. But that dynamic nature requires curiosity and experimentation to manage. It requires you become familiar with the plants so you can anticipate their next move. And that may take a few years to master, but if you set the right expectations and practice management as creative play, you may end up with a landscape solution that takes less time and energy than mowing a lawn. Glancing at our design, we're going to begin by adding structural plants like fruiting trees for the neighborhood and screening plants to block views into windows. Next, we're going to add low-growing plants along the driveway and the street that won't flop and will give the rest of the grassland a tidier edge. In the center of the grassland, we'll layer plants according to height from shortest to tallest from the street to the house. And along the edge, we'll add a layer of dense and competitive plants to help crowd out weeds coming in from the neighbor. The design also features a gravel courtyard that remains hot and dry, so we can grow fragrant Mediterranean herbs the owner remembers from her childhood. We have these around the front door to revive her spirit when coming in and out of the house. We installed river rock stormwater management areas to reduce the velocity of stormwater from hardscapes and rooftops before organizing the flow into two swales, one with several ports that allow stormwater to enter the grassland before reaching the street. Lastly, we installed screening trees to control views. These trees include fast-growing conifers that provide instant gratification, but will eventually be removed and composted to allow the slower-growing southern magnolias among them to be the dominant screening plant in the future. We organized plants according to microclimates that are analogous to their preferred habitats and where they can provide services like ground cover in dry areas or stormwater management along drainage paths. At the hot edges, we applied a seed mix of species that are sun-loving, drought-tolerant, and grass-focused, but which remain low, so they're less likely to flop into walking areas. In the center of the grassland, we applied a mix of sun-loving and drought-tolerant species, but which get a little bit taller and have a heavier mix of forbs whose height can be supported by taller grasses. Along edges where stormwater collects, we added a seed mix that features species that can tolerate more moisture around their roots, especially in winter, and with a heavier percentage of sedges that can not only tolerate wet conditions, but also the shade that comes with being buried by highly competitive forbs and grasses that we'll be adding later as plugs. A mulch edge was laid for immediate erosion control at the bottom of the watershed and to help reduce seed germination around the low spreading plants we'll be planting as plugs so that those plugs have a chance to dominate before having to compete with the grasses coming up from the seed mix. Now that we've finished our design, our next step is to prepare the soil and sow the foundation of our grassland with seed of native plants.